Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome back to Choice of Life Middle Ages 2, where last time we took on the role of a young heir to the throne of a kingdom, and we died quite a lot of times. We got killed by thorns, we got killed by a goblin numerous times, we got killed by a living statue, there was quite a lot of being killed last time, but right now we find ourselves very much not dead, which is quite refreshing, and we're out here in the snow with a snowdrop that we need to take back to magic school over here. I mean, okay, it's not quite Hogwarts over here. I think Hogwarts has got the upper hand on this place architecturally, certainly. But do you know what? We're over here, we've done some learning, and we need to head back at some point to do our exam. However, we do also have another couple of options. We could head over here and look at the rich yard, or we could head over here and look at the ruined hut. Now, I think maybe going to the rich yard is going to take us sort of out of the way of where we need to go. We need to go down here. That's sort of not quite in the opposite direction, but it's not going down toward here at all. So I think we'll overlook the rich yard for now, but I do think we should possibly pop into the ruined hut just as we're on our way by, because we need to go down here anyway to sort of, you know, cheap knockoff Hogwarts. So we'll just sort of come past here, have a little look at the ruined hut, have a poke around, and then go back over here and do our exam. So I think that's what we'll do. So let's head over to the ruined hut and get out of the cold as well, because it was very chilly over there. So here we go. What's going on at the ruined hut? You notice how a student kicked a rat. After the next kick, the rat flies at you. Oh, okay. So there's a student here at the ruined hut. So kick the rat. Why are you torturing it? I mean, let's be nice. Let's be nice. Why are you kicking a rat? That's not very nice at all. This rat uh, stole my stuff. These, what's it called? Reagents. And he told me to, <laughs> he told me to Kiss his bottom, it says there. Okay, so he deserved it. Kick it or kick the student away. Hang on, what? So the rat stole this chappy's stuff. These, what's it called? Reagents. Okay, so the rat stole some reagents from this student. And he told me to kiss his backside. The rat can talk. Okay, it's a talking rat. So he deserved it. Kick it or kick the student away. Uh, I'm, I'm impartial on this entirely. I think we possibly should side with the student. Maybe we should side with our fellow students. So let's kick the rat out of the way. And we've died. <laughs> Already we've died. How long have we been playing? What's that? About a minute and a half, is it possibly? The rat eagerly bit your finger. And we've died again. Okay. Danger lurks at every turn. You better get used to it. We're very used to it. Okay. So add that death onto the list of ways that we've died. Okay. Let's go back to the ruined hut. Why are you torturing the rat? Um. Okay. Kick the student away. Oh, there we go. We've now got the uh, the title of kind. Although we've kicked a student. So it's not that kind. You distracted the student and the rat was able to escape. So we got a title of kind by kicking a student. Little bit strange, but okie doke. The rat ran to a ruined hut and crawled under the door. Okay, so follow the rat to the ruined hut. You can see an alchemy table inside the dark room. Suddenly you hear a squeaky voice call out from somewhere inside the room. Okay, the rat is a person, isn't it? The rat is a person who's been fiddling about with potions and chemicals and whatever else, and they've turned themselves into a rat. And now we're going to have to turn them back. I imagine that's what's going to happen. Wow, my hips hurt. Is that evil student gone? Says the rat. Okay. Hello, little rat. Are you a human? Why did you rob him? Okay. Are you a human? Let's ask that, shall we? Are you a human? I was once until I quarreled with my wife. Okay. <laughs> right. Is your wife some sort of some sort of alchemist or a spellcaster or something? Um, tell me more, please. I want to know more. What can I say? We didn't get along, not even from the day of the wedding. One day she turned me into a rat. The spell was broken only once, but not for long. I became a rat once more. Okay, so what are you going to do? Or apparently there were reasons. What does that mean? Reasons for what? Okay, what are you going to do about this? I want to become a human again. Completely understandable. I have collected the reagents for the potion. Are you also from the academy? Were you taught how to make a transformation potion? Yes, or I don't remember. I think we did make a transformation potion. Oh, don't ask me for the things. Okay, great. The only thing is, it's been a little while since I actually played this game. And I've been away since then. I've had many pina coladas and I'm not entirely sure if I can remember the ingredients of the transformation potion. I don't know alchemy. I just bought all of the ingredients here hoping for the best. Will you help me? 
Okay, what will I get from here? Oh yes, I'll mix it now. Oh no. Right, hang on, hang on. A table with various reagents is in front of you. Okay, we needed that because I don't recognize that picture. I'm kind of remembering the pictures more than the words. Wolf's Ramson. Yeah, that thing. That was kind of like a sort of a purpley grass type thing. You crush Wolf's Ramson and add it to the pot. Okay, what will you add next? A goblin's hat, cedar oil cake, heart of the mountain. It was that, wasn't it? It was that pile of green stuff in a bowl. You crush cedar oil cake and threw it into the pot. And the last ingredient, ratty flour or salt peter. Oh no, I can't remember which one it was. It, w it was some powdery looking stuff in a bowl, that's for sure. I think it might have been ratty flour. I think it might have been that. Let's throw that in. You gave a red potion to the rat and he began to transform. Yes, I remembered a thing. No, I remember three things. Okay, wonderful. That's very exciting. Um, shortly, a man in rich clothing appeared. Oh, okay. So, okay, it transformed his clothing as well. That's quite handy. Thanks, you're a smart one. As promised, get a reward. I don't think you did promise a reward, but we did this out of the goodness of our heart. So there is Ratman. Okay, so take, and we got a cure for the plague. The rich man examined the alchemy table and gave you a small red bottle. I thought you said you weren't an alchemist. You didn't know alchemy. How do you know what that does? Okay, that's quite handy though. A cure for the plague is not a bad thing at all. When I was in the South, the most serious diseases were treated with this medicine. Thank you. Okay, that's really good. At this point, you said goodbye to the rich man and left the shack. Okay, right. So that's that done. That was well worth doing, apart from being killed the first time around. But now we've got that sort of got a little potion that can help us heal up a bit if we get a disease. Okay, right. Good stuff. I think then let's head down here. Let's go and do our exam. Oh, an expected event. A looted cart stands by the road and trace of the robbery are still visible on the ground. Inspect. Run, imme run. run immediately. We've got one single heart remaining. And if we go and inspect it, the bad guys are going to come back and they're going to kill us to death. So run away, please. Just get out of there. We're not hanging around for that malarkey. Right. Go to the exam. You're on the doorstep of the academy. The clay guardian lets you in without question and without killing us this time around. That's quite nice. So enter. You meet Finn in the hallway. Did you find a snowdrop? You're a capable student. Very few people come back from such a task. How did you find it? Okay, under a bush or it's a secret. Was it under a bush? It was in a clearing of some sort, wasn't it? It wasn't in like a little sort of meadow type thing. I'm going to put it as a secret. It's a secret. Okay, you can take the exam. It will take place in a week. Until then, focus on your classes, preparation and new recipes. Okay, let's have a rest then. You went to the dining room and after that to your room to rest before tomorrow. Okie doke, sounds like a good plan. You've got some free time. Sleep or have fun? Um, I mean, I like the idea of having some fun. Are we going to do a jig like this? That looks like a very jaunty jig. Let's go and do that. You drank a fun potion and returned to classes only a few days later. <laughs> a fun, po or is it a fun potion? It was a potion that made us have fun. Uh, today we will learn another important potion. This might be on the exam, so pay attention. This is the potion of life. Write it down and memorize it. Okay, what does it do? Silently write down the recipe. Okay, what does it do? That seems like a fair question. The potion of life. I mean, does it heal you? Does it bring people back from the dead? What exactly is its purpose? It is a potion of general effect. It heals wounds, cures poisoning, and restores strength. I haven't tried it myself since the ingredients to use it, uh, so to make, sorry, to make it are so rare. Okay, so write down the recipe. So it's just kind of like a healing potion. It's just going to be a healing potion. Okay, as a base of goat's milk, then you add in the crushed stem of a one-year-old... Oh, ah, here we go. That's why I went and got a one-year-old snowdrop. So you add that in. Then add grated garlic, a stone mushroom, and a magic pepper. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I can't remember all these things. <laughs> this is way too many things for me to remember. So, okay, right, hang on a second. So, goat's milk... Then we add in our one-year-old snowdrop. That's okay. I can remember that because we've got that. Then add in grated garlic. Okay. And then a stone mushroom and then a magic pepper. Okay. Okay. There's no way I'm going to remember that. But okay. Keep listening. Don't tell me there's more. We won't make it today since we do not have enough snowdrops. Therefore, we will finish today's lesson by weeding out the beds in the greenhouse. Okay. So we either explore the library or weed the beds. 
I mean, we're supposed to be weeding out the bed, so let's do as we're told. Let's go and do that properly. You were late into the evening pulling weeds from the beds in the greenhouse. A student with a scar on his face suggests everyone should explore the secret room. Ah, now no. See, we did that before, didn't we? We did that and we got killed. I can't quite recall how, but we got dead. So no, we're going to ignore that. Thank you very much. Um, Then you found out it was a local bully. You see, we did that before. Today is the last day of classes. Let's learn how to make explosive spores. First, take a magic pepper. Okay, we know it's that, because we know that's wolf something or other. So, okay, it's this sort of withered-looking chili pepper type thing. Now take a goblin's hat and give it a good rub. Um, Which was... Oh, no, we saw a goblin's hat in the thing just now, didn't we? We saw a goblin's hat. Was it that? I think it might have been that. Um, yeah, when we were doing the alchemy stuff in the ruined hut, I think it might have been that. Um, okay, we'll go for that then. And the last ingredient is salt, Peter. That was the blue one. That That's ratty flour. That's salt, Peter. I'm fairly certain. Okay. And we've learned alchemy. And we know how to make explosive spores. You carefully mixed all the ingredients. Suddenly you heard a strange hissing noise. After a few seconds, there was a small popping sound from the bowl. Okay, so we've learned the alchemy skill. And we've got explosive spores. Okay, so hang on. Where are our skills then? Skills. We have a scar. And now we know alchemy. This is wonderful. And there we go. Title as well. But okay, right. That's really good. Classes are over for today. I must ask everyone not to come to the second floor tomorrow as we are holding the exam. Okay, right. Cheerio. Finn asks you to stay after class. Oh, okay. If you want to see Calistratus or Calistratus, then you have to start getting ready now. You will need to prepare a snowdrop potion during the exam. Do you remember what the base of the potion is? The snowdrop potion. It was... Oh no, was it goat's... Was it goat's milk? It, it was something like that. I've forgotten already. Um, um, I'm sure it was something like goat's milk. Joe you know what? It's, we'll, we'll go on with it. Uh, you have to milk our, old, our goat, old Brumhilda. Be gentle with her. All right, it was goat's milk. Yeah, I remember the thing. He prepared a bucket and went down to the courtyard of the academy. Brumhilda grazes serenely near the gate. Okay, start milking or wash her udder. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know much about milking goats, if I'm completely honest. But I imagine maybe washing the udder first before you then start milking the goat would be a sensible thing. You know, hygiene and such. Let's wash her udder. You fill the bucket with water. Wash with cold water, warm the water up. Okay, I imagine an udder is a sensitive part of an animal. And if you put cold water on it, we're going to get kicked in the face by a goat. So let's warm the water up and use that. So Brumhilda is saying, meh. Okay, massage her udder or milk immediately. Oh, I, I, what, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to milk a goat. Um, massage her udder? This feels very deeply uncomfortable. Master of handling animals. You milk half a jug of goat's milk and Brumhilda stayed happy. And look, a little smiley dog face. Wonderful stuff. You added a crushed snowdrop stem to a jug of goat's milk and left it to infuse until tomorrow. Okay, it's going well. It's going well. However, we have lost our snowdrop. You're having a strange dream. You're milking a goat in the middle of a snowy forest. Finn and Lord to that. Oh, poor Lord. Sorry, Lord. You hear them placing bets on whether or not you'll freeze to death. <laughs> that sort of happened. The day, uh, the day of the exam, sorry, has finally arrived. Finn told you to go to the second store of the academy, and then he left. Once you make it upstairs, you notice there is only one alchemy table sitting in front of you. Okay, so we step forward. You heard a voice from the darkness. Ah, it's Calistratus, Calistratus, you there. We need to speak to you because then you might be able to get a message back to the castle saying, oh, hang on a minute. Here is the you know, the true heir to the throne or whatever. Is that why we had to speak to you? I can't quite recall now. It's been a while. All the pina coladas have affected my memory. Greeting, student. Prepare a potion of vitality and then we'll talk. The table with ingredients is in front of you. Okay, go to the table. The ingredients are neatly laid out on the table, along with your jug of goat's milk infused with crushed snowdrop. Now you have to prepare the second component. Okay, so we've got the goat's milk and we've got the snowdrop. There was some sort of there was some sort of garlic in there. There was garlic 
There was a pepper. And there was something else. There was garlic and pepper. And hang on, hang on. There's a magical pepper there. It, we didn't have the blue thing, because that's for the other potion. And I don't recall blood leaf. That's something dragony. We need gloves for that. So the pepper, put the pepper in. What is the next ingredient? Ah, garlic. That was a thing. Yeah, garlic. Okay. And what is the last ingredient? Um, uh, I don't think it was a goblin's hat. That was for something. That was for the other thing we made. Bone flour or a stone mushroom? I can't remember. I should have written this down, really. I should have an actual student thing and documented what we had to do. Bone flour or a stone mushroom? Um... I can't recall whichever one it was. I, I've got no no reason to pick one above the other. Let's pick the stone mushroom because it looks like a little green fun sort of umbrella. There we go. We'll pick that, please. Calistrata slides out of the shadows, grabbing your potion. You watch as he greedy slurps down the concoction. I wouldn't be so ready because I can't quite recall one of those ingredients. But OK, what happens? Let's observe. The old man seems to be glowing with joy. Then he even starts dancing. Okay. <laughs> We've given him something that's made him very jolly. It is truly a potion of life. Did we do it? Did we just make a potion of life? It was the green umbrella mushroom thing. I haven't had one of these in a year. Can we talk now? And now we've graduated. An old mage finished a potion and wiped his moustache with a sleeve. Okay, we've now graduated from magic school. Hooray, this is very exciting. Yes, yes, we can discuss your problem now, Prince. Okay, right, you know that we're the Prince. Okay, how did you know that I'm the Prince? The doors of the Academy are only open to those who tell the truth. The Clay Guard informs me of all who enter here. You've known all this time that the Prince was here. Of course, quiet, quiet, Your Grace. The rules are the same for everyone, and you are here in front of me now. What do you need? Okay, help me get back to the castle. Or, oh, furious, angry, you'll pay for this when I become king. Probably not what we say to that chappy there. Because otherwise he'll go, I'm not going to help you then. Goodbye. Help me get back to the castle, please. Wait, uh, well, tell me what happened. I only had the news that you went missing. Okay, so tell him what happened. You told your story for over an hour. Calistratus listened, interested in every detail. So you're saying that one of your attackers stole your ring and that you will only be allowed back in the castle if you have that ring. Absolutely, yes, because we did have a fancy ring, didn't we, with a traquasta sort of symbol thing on it, whatever it was called, a sort of uh, intertwined, loopy symbol thing, but they took it off us. So yeah, now we don't have it. Okay, that is the case. The assassin touched your hand when he took your ring, so your body could still contain his corpuscles. What? <laughs> okay, that sounds a bit weird, but okay. We can restore previous events with the help of a memory potion and find out where your ring is. Okay, take the potion. You took Calistratus's potion and slipped into a dream. Vague images began to float in front of your eyes. You're back in the forest where the hunting tournament was held, where it all went wrong. Um, We didn't agree on that, Alric. Damn it, I risked my life to get into this forest and catch the prince. Oh! So now we're seeing from the point of view of the assassin. So because we touched the assassin, or the assassin touched our hand when they took the ring off, we've been able to connect with them because of some sort of weird flimmy flammy thing. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. We're seeing what's happening with the assassin. Okay. Observe what's happening. Alric. Okay, so the assassin is talking to Alric. Uh, Alric tosses the bag of coins to the assassin's hands. You notice a familiar tattoo. Oh, remind me, game, remind me. You won't get anything else. And if you open your mouth again, you'll be left without teeth. Got it. Okay, do we know who Alric is? Have we met Alric before? I'm not entirely sure. Vague shapes begin to curse among themselves. Soon the sky darkens and you see the assassin steal a horse. The assassin is galloping down a snowy road until the village appears in his path. Okay, the assassin dismounts in the village. There is a board with the inscription, Welcome to Holm. Your vision blurs as you wake up from the dream. Okay, so we've got to go to Holm, I imagine, then. What did you see, Your Grace? The assassin's name was Alric. The assassin ran to Holm. I mean, the assassin's name was Alric might be more useful. Because he might go, oh, Alric, I know Alric. He lives down the road. He's a, a terrible chap. Um, okay, Alric. Calistratus shook his head. The assassin ran to Holm. Holm is east of here. Now you know where to go, Your Grace. What do you mean you won't help me? Then I won't waste any more time. No, what do you mean you won't help me? Come on, come with me. Didn't I help you already? 
In addition to that, I must stay here to support the Academy until I have a successor. Okay, then I won't waste any more time or go to hell. Can we just say, okay, thanks for your help, cheerio? Um, okay, I feel like we should buy him something. Can we buy him a nice bunch of flowers? Okay, now right, here we go. Uh, you took your certificate stating that you successfully passed the exam and left the Academy. Okay, so now we've done that. So we can go to, hang on, we can go to, where's Holm then? Holm is over there. So there's Holm. There's an abandoned tower. We've got to go to the abandoned tower. It looks suitably creepy. Look at that. It's a very odd thing. We're going to go to the abandoned tower. That's where we can go past the posh house. An unexpected event. A man in dirty clothes runs towards you and yells something indistinct. Knock him out. Let him pass by. Uh, what, just let him go by? It turned out the men were just playing tag. You joined along and had a good time. Okay, we just had a little game of tag there. Okay, ah, I see, and if we'd have punched him, I imagine they'd have fought back. Okay, abandoned tower. What's going on here? You see a man in a hood walking along the road. His robe looks familiar to you. Go up to him or let him go. Uh, okay, I suppose we can go up to him and just say, hello, you recognise Finn's face under the hood. Oh, it's Finn. Hey, Finn, how are you? Hmm, an unexpected meeting. Didn't you go looking for the ring? I'm looking for it. And what are you doing here? Yeah, Finn, why are you out here at this spooky tower? What are you doing out here? Do you see the tower? Yes. You're trying to look carefully where Finn is pointing, but you can't see anything. Oh, yes. Drink it. What did you forget there? Drink and watch, or I won't. Hang on, Finn. Finn was quite nice to us. I think Finn is one of our friends. I think we should trust Finn with this. We don't trust that many people, but yeah, he could have... He's had plenty of opportunities to you know, do a killing at us. He's had plenty of opportunities to murder us if we wanted to. So I think, yeah, he's he's all right. So we'll drink this potion and we'll see what happens. You began to see, as never before, every pore on Finn's face is now visible in full details. Then you looked into the distance. Okay, so some sort of mega vision potion. First, the fuzzy outline of a tall tower appears and then you notice the windows and the front door. Okay, so then we can say, good luck, I'm off. I want to go to the tower too, or isn't it dangerous? I mean, what do we do here? It does look like quite a dangerous tower. It's got kind of sinister pointy bits on the top, and we had to use a magical potion to kind of see where it was. But it could be quite exciting. But then why is Finn here? Why is Finn over at the magical, invisible tower? I'm not entirely sure. What's the best thing for us to do here? Do you know what? I want to go to the tower as well, Finn. Come on, let's go and have a little look at what's happening. We've had to take a potion so we can see it in the first place. Now we know it's there. Let's go and have a little look around, shall we? So I want to go to the tower too. Come on, it should be safe. If there's two of us, just don't do stupid things. Okay, so examine it or just go straight to it. Examine it because it does look a little bit sinister. It's got kind of evil looking claw pointy bits on it. And it has a magical crystal -y thing at the top as well. So let's examine it first, maybe from a distance. Your attention is drawn to the strange masonry of the walls, which seem to consist of two different layers. Okay, so uh, do we examine it again? Oh, it's the same thing. Okay, right. So go up to the tower then. You approach the tower, which is now clearly visible. You open the front door. Oh, okay. No locks then. The corridors of the hall are hung with dense cobwebs and there's a thick layer of dust on the candlesticks. Okay, clean up or go further. Do you know what? Whilst we're here, let's clean up, shall we? Because that seems like a very odd option. Let's have a clean... Oh, hang on. Hang on. There's, there, we've got a hard bag. Finn looked at you as if you're an idiot until you stumbled upon a healing potion. <gasps> we've recovered a heart. We can take a bit of damage and not immediately die. That's wonderful stuff. As soon as you enter the second floor, the doors in front and behind you slam shut and the ceiling began to drop. Wonderful. Okay, right. We're in a crushing trap thing. Think or panic. Well, think would help, wouldn't it? Oh, botheration. <laughs> okay. Okay. We got the heart back and we lost it immediately because we took too long to think. You took too long to think and you started to get pressed down on the floor. But soon Finn found the button to stop the mechanism. Oh, we... Oh, botherations. Never mind. You've reached the top of the uh, the top room of the tower, sorry. There's a whole library of old books and mysterious devices illuminated by the light from the window. Okay, loot through the old books, take a breath. Hmm, why would it say take a breath? Are we supposed to notice a trap or something? We're going to take a breath. You sat down on a dusty stack of books and papers. 
Okay, you notice an unnaturally sized spider among the stack of papers. Slap it with a book, say hello, or run. Okay, now we did just meet a person who was a rat. Maybe this is a person who is a spider. Maybe. Let's say hello. We might possibly die in a second. Um, oh, no. The spider bows down and runs behind a stack of books. Okay, I thought it might have bitten us and killed us, but no. Okay, Finn called you to look at a big book. This is a complete encyclopedia of herbs and plants of the kingdom. Okay, so what's going on with the book? Finn started leafing through the book, and when he reached the page titled One Year Old Snowdrop, began to read aloud. Okay, these one year old snowdrops are very important then. Listen, here's a torn page from the Academy's duplicate. Okay, was the page torn out? I don't remember. Listen, okay. The one year old snowdrop takes a year of the life of the one who plucked it. However, whoever drinks the elixir made from the snowdrop will get that year back. I understood nothing. Then it is Calistratus. Hang on. The one year old snowdrop takes a year of the life of the one who plucked it. So we plucked the snowdrop. So a year of our life went into that snowdrop, kind of held there magically or whatever. However, whoever drinks the elixir made from the snowdrop will get that year back. So Calistratus, Calistratus got a year of our life because he made... Hang on a minute. Is he... He's farming life from the students at the academy. That's a little bit sinister, isn't it? Okay, then it is Calistratus, the old scoundrel. Finn, finish your words. Oh, Finn sat down, processing this information. Suddenly, you heard a noise from downstairs, and the room began to get dark. Oh, dear. Okay, we have to go. And I imagine there we're saying a few choice words like, gosh, and cripes, and such like. Okay, Finn doesn't respond to you. Finn sits in a daze. Run, 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 slap Finn. Uh, oh, there we go. Friend! Finn came to his senses after you slapped him in the face. You know, a, a true friend would slap another one in the face, of course. You run out of the tower at the very last moment. Turning around, you notice that the front door and windows are somehow being covered with a second layer of stone. It looks to you like the tower is eating itself. Okay, sit in the grass. Got no choice. Fresh grass seemed even more pleasant to you after being in those musty, dusty corridors. The tower turned around its axis and closed. Must be no defence mechanism. It was fun. What are you going to do? I mean, what are you going to do seems the most pertinent question. After a long pause, Finn answered. My whole life is in the academy, and now I have no desire to go back there. I need to be alone for a while. All right, I have to go. Okay. <laughs> Yay, friend. We're not going to help you. We're just going to clear off. Okay. So we're going to go away. But oh, so Calistratus. Calistratus was not exactly a bad guy but he was using the students. He was taking a life, a year of life from each of the students and getting it back himself. How old is he? He could be very old indeed. Okay, all right, I have to go. After sitting by the fire for a while, you hit the road. Okay, so now we can't go to the abandoned tower, but it was well worth going to that because that gave us an exciting bit of story. Uh, okay, over to the village of Holm then um, to find this assassin. The darkened roofs of the fishermen's shacks stick out from behind Holm's sign. The street is empty, except for one horse tied to a post. The village seems to be abandoned. Okay, well, whose horse is it then? Inspect the horse. Is that the horse that the assassin stole? Because they did nick a horse. Okay, inspect the horse. There is a strange mask on the horse's face, and you notice bags of herbs tied to its saddle. Okay, that doesn't seem overly alarming, I suppose. The silhouette of a man in a mask flash behind one of the crumbling shacks. Nothing to do or hay. Well, let's shout hay, see what happens. Are you a resident of Holm? Says Albert. And Albert has a plague mask on. Okay, no, I'm looking for a man with a tattoo. Or yes, I'm looking for a man with a tattoo. Let's go straight in. I ask you a question, answer me. Yes, no, no, I'm not, absolutely not. Then leave before it is too late. Okay... I imagine there's a plague, but we're going to ask why. The plague has come to Holm. Soon, it'll spread all over the village. I'm looking for a man with a tattoo. The headman has buboes of the size of walnuts. Half of the inhabitants lie covered in ulcers in their homes. Soon, this village will come to an end. Why? Oh, no. Who are you looking for in a place like this? Okay, so then I'll find him myself. Or what do I do now? Uh. Does, does, they don't really answer his question. What do I do now? Let's go for that. Check all the residents, isolate the sick, and wait for orders from the castle. I have to go. 
Albert jumped on his horse and rode away. <laughs> Hang on, what? So we're supposed to do this? Oh, crap. Hang on a minute. We're now becoming a plague doctor. Um, okay, let's go. Let's start at the small house. Go to, oh, no, that one. Go to the broken house, then the small one, then the big fancy one. To the house with a collapsed roof. There's an old fisherman sitting in this house, fixing his gear. A tattoo, you would say. A bandit or what? Hee <laughs> hee. Now, I haven't seen anyone who would look like this. We fishermen all walk around with rolled up sleeves. I would remember. Okay. Seems like you're sick with the plague. Shout the option or just leave. Okay, we'll just leave. The fisherman wished you good health and returned to his net. Okay, fair. Check the small house. It turned out to be the office of a loan shark. You asked him about the man with the tattoo. Man with the tattoo? Who are you? Get out. Epidemic or leave? Okay. I don't want to shout epidemic. We'll leave that one. The loan shark was very suspicious. He decided to keep an eye on his house. Several peasants are dancing restlessly on the street. Okay. I'm tempted to join in, but if they've got the plague, we do have a potion to cure the plague. But I'd rather not get it. Can we observe them? The peasants dance con uh, continuously for several hours and soon begin to collapse from tiredness one by one. That was a real thing, wasn't it? That's a real thing that happened a long time ago. I think I read about that on the internet, so it must be true. Um, there was some sort of like dancing thing and a load of people in a medieval village dance themselves to death, I think it was. I can't quite recall exactly where it might have been or anything, but I'm fairly certain that's a real actual thing. Um, a drunkard came to the loan shark's house. Okay, eavesdrop or wait outside eavesdrop. Let's listen in. Okay, so we're listening at the door, I think. I won't lend you any more money. You have to work off the previous loans. Yes, and the countess has been complaining that the fish are not delivered on time. Also, a guy asked about you. Did you rob someone again? <gasps> it's the person. Okay, listen in. The drunkard quarreled with the loan shark, then went to leave. The drunkard went outside and hobbled toward the sea. Catch up or call... Catch up, catch up, catch up, please. The drunkard began to run away, but tripped on his own feet. When you approached, he recognised your face. I killed you, Rotter, I swear to God. Okay, assassin is... Uh, assassin's been caught and he's drunk, so we have a bit of an advantage. Where is my ring? Where is your leader? Where is my ring? That's what we're after. We want that back. The drunkard starts to pray. It's in Alric's stash. Okay, who is Alric? Our leader, damn him tell me more. How would I know? He promised to pay a lot, said the work was easy, but damn that jolly swine bag, he lied. I don't know anything else. Where can I find Alric? Alric is in his lair in the mountains. There are two crooked pines and a path between them. Now let me go, demon. Okay, let the assassin go or deal with the assassin. We're, we're not, we're not going to murder him. Because that would be, that's not good, is it? He's kind of done his bit. He might come after us, possibly. Oh, is he going to, if we let him go, is he going to come and try and kill us? Are we going to walk off and he's going to run and stab us in the back? I th My instinct says let him go. Just let him go. So in the mountains, two crooked pines and a path between them. Okay, let the assassin go. The drunkard looked around and hobbled off. You decide to look for lodging for the night. An amiable fisherman let you spend the night in a ruined shack. Oh, thanks, friend. Okay, have a little rest. Your thoughts won't let you fall asleep. Now you know where to look for your ring. Okay, you're leaving the village in the morning when you notice Albert at the entrance with guards armed with torches. Ask Albert what's happened or leave the village. Uh, okay, ask Albert what happened. That makes sense. Um, a message from the castle came. We've been ordered to burn the village in order to stop the spread of the contagion. Leave the village or I can help. We've got a potion that might be able to help that. Uh, yeah, help out with that. That could be handy. I can help. You had the medicine to Albert. So the cure for the plague medicine is gone, but maybe we could save an entire settlement. Albert gave a drop of the medicine to the head of the village, and the next morning the pustules on his neck began to dissolve. Shortly, all who received the medicine went on the mend. Leave the village. Residents didn't let you go this easy. This feast is in your honour, Wanderer. Oh, we're, we're having a feast. We're having a delicious feast. Oh, they've got a pot of lovely soup. It's the kettle on. Can we have some tea, please? I'd love a cup of tea. Maybe a bit of cake and a biscuit. That'd be lovely. And we've got another heart back. We'll lose that, no doubt, very soon. You were invited to a celebration. The treats were modest, but you hadn't seen anyone this happy in a very long time. Oh, wonderful. We had a big old shindig. Splendid. Okay. Camp of Assassins. So Holm is now closed off. We've done that. We need to go up into the mountains. 
Not there. There's a big terrifying fish monster. Um, oh, it's here. It's here. It's not that far away from the castle. It's a bit of a brazen place, isn't it? Okay, so it's in that hut there. It's in that hut there. I mean, yeah, we haven't even been down here, look. We didn't even go down to the deserty bit. We avoided that as a weird kind of tower there as well, isn't there? With sort of a uh, mysterious steam coming out of it. But, um, okay, Camp of Assassins. That's the only place we can go. Unexpected event. A, a crowd of drunk cackling robbers is coming towards you. Cackle with them, or can you be quiet? Oh no, I don't want to lose one of our hearts. I think if we cackle with them, because they're drunk, they're just going to think we're just somebody else who's a bit drunk. Cackle with them. Ha 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 ha. They mistook you for their buddy. You avoided a conflict. Okay. Hooray for the drunk cackling. Marvellous. Right. Over here we go. Assassin camp. You walked along a path between two crooked pines. An old hovel loomed in the distance. There are assassins guarding the road. Okay. Follow or talk. Follow what? What are we following, and who are we talking to? Uh, I, I'm going to follow, because talking potentially means they know we're there, and then they might kill us. We're going to follow, whatever it is. The sentry headed toward the camp, and you were able to get closer. The sentry sat down by the fire, next to which two more men were sitting. You notice another assassin by the old hut, standing farther away. Okay, so wait. Sneak upon the hovel's guard. I think maybe we wait. Let's be really cautious. The guard by the hovel was called over by the men sitting by the fire, and he moved toward them. Throw explosive spores into the fire, or sneak into the hovel. Now, both of these options are good. Throwing explosive spores into the fire is going to cause panic, and it might possibly take some of them out. They might cause damage to the assassins. But if it doesn't work you know, as well as it might go, they're going to know we're here. That breaks our sort of element of surprise. And it might just yeah, might be like little sort of firecracker things. And they'll go, oh, okay, someone's around. Let's go and find them. I think we sneak into the hovel. Hopefully they're not going to come back. But I think we have to try to sneak in. The door to the shack is under direct surveillance by the assassins. You understand that in order to slip through a notice, phenomenal dexterity is needed. Okay, right. So we have to do that. Okay, right. Fine. Do that then. And we can do that. So now I've got a new title of the, Bomba uh, the Bombardier Prince. You crept up on the assassins at the campfire. Okay, we've made bombs. We're now able to chuck bombs. The spore bomb hit the fire and exploded. Four bandits around the fire fell dead. Oh, right. It was a big explosion. We've just killed four assassin bandit types. Okay, so now go to the hovel. The head of the assassins, Alric, ran out at the sound of the explosion, which would make sense, yes. What the hell is going on here? Who are you? Wait a minute. Brother, so you are alive. Why did you come here? Brother? P what? Pardon what? <laughs> okay, brother, question mark, seems a pertinent thing. Didn't you know our dad loved to have fun with peasant women? Damn, I don't believe you. Or, oh... You are out. Do you know what? Normally, we, we, don't, we don't do rude words in the Geek Cupboard normally, but in this particular instance, this is a legitimate use of that word. So you can say, oh, you're a bastard, because he is an actual bastard. You know, his dad abandoned him. That's what that means, isn't it? So, you know, he's a fatherless person, I think that means. Um, okay, so damn it, I don't believe you. We'll go down that one there. Yeah, yes, I was less fortunate than you. I was born from a peasant woman. And as I see, luck is on your side again. You're alive and well, although we killed you. Well, you clearly didn't, did you? Are you jealous? Even though I envy you, I didn't want to kill you. It's just a job, nothing personal. And who do you work for, brother of ours? A crossbow bolt flies into Alric's chest and knocks him back a few metres. Go to the sound of the shot. Go to Alric. Oh, no. OK, right, here we go. We go to the sound of the shot. We might possibly find where somebody is, but the likelihood is that they you know, fired the crossbow and then legged it. So they're not going to be there. And then Alric is likely going to die because it's in his chest. If we go to Alric, we could probably have a little chat with him before he dies, but they might also fire a crossbow bolt at our chest and kill us a little bit. Um, I th let's go to Alric. Let's go to it. They're already gone. If they're already that good at being an assassin, they're not going to hang around where they fired the crossbow bolt from. So let's go to Aurek and see what we can do. Forgive me. Okay, take your ring, finish. I'm not going to finish him off. 
I forgive you, Arik. Let's take my ring. Hey, we've got the ring back. Okay, Arik handed you the ring and passed out. A crossbow bolt whistled near your ear. Go to the sound of the shot. A mass shooter begins to reload his crossbow. Then he notices you and heads towards you holding a melee weapon. Get ready. Oh, no, not to fight. At the corner of your eye, you notice Serpentine's tail in the bushes. <gasps> cat friend. Magic cat face. In the heat of battle, your back itched unbearably. Keep watching the enemy. Ask the enemy to scratch. What? <laughs> this is completely unexpected. What do you mean? What is this? I can't ask the enemy to scratch my back. In the middle of a fight to the death. So, ha, I will kill you. No, I will kill you. We are sworn enemies. But if, could you just scratch my back a bit first, please? Because it's a little bit itchy. Do that, and then we'll have a fight to death. Thank you so much. Um... I'm tempted to put that just because I don't know what it means. I'm going to ask the enemy to scratch my back. The enemy agrees, expecting to stab you in the back, but you struck first. Now you can take care of your back. I, okay, I don't know what happened there. That's bizarre. Serpentine jumped on the shooter and grabbed his head with her claws. After getting rid of the cat, he turned to run. Okay, so yeah, purple cat friend is helping, whatever colour Serpentine was. Go after him. Okay, hang on. That's shining. Why did that just shine? The killer ran behind a rock and disappeared from sight. Examine the rock. There's a narrow gap behind the rock. Having made a torch from what was in the camp, you went inside. You find yourself in a dirty, damp cave. Left and right, bad. I left, it's the first one there. The cave narrows and expands, You're walking for half an hour, but there's still no traces of the assassin. Okay, keep going. Past the second half of an hour. You came to an abrupt stop. There's a crack in your path. You load the torch to look inside, but you can't even see the bottom. Throw the torch down, jump down, find another way. We're not going to jump down because it might be 4,000 metres deep and we're going to plummet to our death. Um, but throwing the torch down means we're going to be in the dark. Find another way. There's no further passage. A crack blocks the way. Okay, <laughs> throw the torch down then. The torch didn't fly for long, but suddenly it went out with a hiss. Well, we've only got one option. We have to jump down. You landed in water, it cushioned your fall. When you got out of the water, you noticed a light ahead. Okay, so we found a way out. After walking for a while, you came across the exit of the cave. The royal garden and the walls of a castle are in front of you. Have we made it back into the castle? We were quite near the castle, weren't we, on the map? Um, okay, look around. You find no trace of the assassin and went to the castle. You've come to the gate, which leads to the garden, but there are no guards. You can freely enter the courtyard. The sounds of celebration can be heard from the main building. Okay, to the main hall. When you open the doors of the main hall, you are blinded by the light of the room. You stumbled and fell in front of the crowd. Now an almost forgotten face looms over you. Oh, it's Victor. Okay, it's impossible. Okay, we'll stand up. The living prince. The courtiers surrounded you and helped you to stand up. We've made our way back. Uh, Victor admitted that you really were the prince who disappeared on a hunting trip. The ring served as the main proof of your royal relationship, and none of the nobility could dispute this. Okay, so look, we're sort of, yeah, we're lying in bed, we're healing up, we're recovering. There's our royal symbol thingamajig. There's Victor and his amazing moustache. Who would not look out of place, let's be honest, Victor. You wouldn't look out of place in an episode of the original He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, right there. That's a very sort of He-Man-esque Kind of go moustache, sort of art style and everything. You look very sort of he man -y, but okay. So we're back. You are back in your castle. Lovely. Ways are opened. Coronation. Camp of Assassins. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, the Camp of Assassins is shut. I think Coronation is the only one we're going to do. You select for several days. Oh, look. Back up to three hearts. We've had a sleep. You slept for several days and in the morning found yourself in the royal chambers. Unexpectedly, the servant bought you breakfast in bed. Okay, have a breakfast of a lovely boily egg or look in the mirror. Uh, look in the mirror? Skill removed. Scar, you're well looked after. Scratches and bruises have healed and the ugly scar is now not so noticeable. Oh, okay, the scar's gone. Let's have a nice boily egg. You haven't eaten so deliciously for a long time, but unfortunately, your meal was interrupted. What about the great big party we had in Holm? That food looked quite nice. Don't be so silly. Your Grace, you have visitors. His Lordship Alexander and Victor wish to see you. Um, who's Alexander? 
Can't recall who you were. Well, let Victor in. Accept Victor in. Hi, Victor. I still can't believe you're alive, Your Highness. This is a great happiness for the whole kingdom. Get to the point. I haven't come to senses yet. Um, okay, get to the point. What do you want? Yes, yes, Your Highness. I have important business. We need to have a coronation as soon as possible. This ceremony will give you full power, which no one will doubt. I've already prepared everything. The ceremony will take place today. Okay, be lazy. Get dressed? Well, let's get dressed. Might as well. You are kingly dressed. Do we get a crown? <gasps> we do. The High Rock places a crown on your head and says a prayer for a long reign. You suddenly feel like sleeping. Oh no. <laughs> this is bad. Yawn or closure. We'll just yawn. Let's just have a yawn. Let's do a little bit of a yawn. Victor looked at you and covered his hat and covered his face with his hand. What a shame. Okay. The High Rock proclaimed you the king. The assembly are applauding. Put on the crown. That is a mighty fine crown. Look at that. That's very good. Many pointy bits. That's wonderful. And you know, as we say, the good mark of a good crown is that you can wear it on your head. And it looks amazing. And also, if you have to, you can use it as a weapon. And that would be quite good. You, you poke that in people's eyes. That'd hurt. Get right up someone's nose. Oh, that'd smart a bit. Put on the crown. We've received the title, the crowned one, and we now have a crown. Now you are the competent ruler of the kingdom. Well, competent is arguable, but okay. Um, your majesty, we should have a feast in honour of your ascension to the throne. Okay, let's celebrate. Let's do without a feast. What do you recommend? Uh, no, let's celebrate. Let's have a great big feast, shall we? Oh, hang on. Something's appeared up at the top. You announce a feast. People are happy with the news. Everyone loves free food. Hang on, what's that? What's this thing at the top? My king, now the entire kingdom is watching your every decision. Protect the loyalty of your subjects, otherwise the enemies will take advantage of your weakened reputation. I got you, let's celebrate. Speaking of my enemies. Oh, hang on. So we've got three hearts, but now we've got four sort of kingdom health points. So they're our personal health points, and that's the sort of the, I don't know, the stability of the kingdom or something. Okay, speaking of my enemies... While the others are having fun at the feast, you and Victor discuss royal affairs. Probably quite important. My king, Torek, is investigating and several subjects have already come under suspicion. You may not worry about it and focus on your duties. Okay. So what are my responsibilities? I want to know the details of the investigation. Where is Torek? Um, I mean, I would like to know what's going on in the armory, but I guess he'll fill you in on the details once he's got enough evidence. What are my responsibilities? You must take care of the inhabitants of the kingdom. Don't forget to attend the audience to answer their request. Or we get to hold court. I'm sorry it's late. I must return to my duties. Go or set off to a meal. Let's go to a meal. A large table had been laid for you and your favourite dishes were prepared. Tea and cake. Marvellous. When a delicacy was brought to you, you remembered how hard it was in the forests and fields of the kingdom. These thoughts make you sad. Okay, so enjoy the delicacies. Try to forget or go for a walk. Maybe we'll go for a nice little walk around. The evening ended without many adventures and in the morning you were overloaded with royal duties. Your Majesty, the ambassadors of the Southerners have come to the castle. We must accept them. Okay, let them in. That seems sensible. Sergio enters the hall with a small delegation of Southerners. Uh, ah, right, okay, so Sergio, hello. Your Majesty, congratulations on your ascension to the throne. I came from afar and on a very important matter. Did you arrange an assassination attempt on me? And what's the deal? Let's not lead with the assassination attempt. What's the deal? What's going on? As you know, the peace between our kingdoms is fragile. Clashes at the border are no longer uncommon. The reason for this are the eastern lands that used to belong to us. Get to the point or continue. Let's be nice. Let's be civil. Your father, Einhard, meanly took these lands from us. Okay, so what? It's your fault. What lands? <sighs> I just kind of want to go continue. What lands? Let's go for that. Sergio unfolded the map in front of you and pointed to the eastern mark. His finger outlined the courtyard of Abathur, the fortress in the village, and a uh, fortress in the valley, sorry, and the village of Berg. Okay. I don't know where they are on a map. So what are it's your fault? Okay, so so what? You must act wisely and return these lands to us. Get out or think about it. Listen to advisors. Listen to advisors. The advisors began to whisper among themselves. Um, Einhard regretted about capturing the Eastern Inheritance, but now these lands are ours and it's too late to change anything, says Victor. And Alexander, 
says, we don't have to give anything away, and it's obvious that the Southerners want war. We need to prepare and get ahead of them. Give an answer. You must act wisely and return these lands to us. Either we can tell him to clear off in anger way, or we can think about it. I will think about it, Sergio. Hmm. I'll ponder it. All right, but we'll come back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine, you do that. Finish the audience. The delegation of Southerners left the hall, and you finally had free time. And, okay, so the coronation is now sorted. We are now the king of whatever these lands are called. Um, and we've got the barracks open and the statue of Einhard. So that's our dad, is it? I think that's a statue of our dad. Oh, look, our little icon, our little sort of uh, character token has changed. We've now got the crown on and some fancy sort of robes and stuff. So, yeah, we can go and have a little um, a little chat with our, you know, the, our dad in statue form or pop over to the barracks. Okay, okay, what I think we'll do is we'll finish things up for now and then we'll come back again to this. But once again, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how much there is because originally when I did this, I thought it would be a one sort of shot thing, a little one-off and it'd be fine. We'd sort of go through and go, yay, there we go. But now... Yeah, this is the end of the second part of this, and it doesn't look like we're entirely finished just yet. Got a little way to go. Oh, hang on. There's the um, the crack in the wall. That's where we came through from the mountains, from the bandit camp. We came out there, climbed down these steps, and ended up in the gardens. There it is. And we didn't encounter the terrifying Yeti monster thing. Oh, that's quite good. Um, but yes, we're going to come back because I kind of thought, when we got home, when we kind of you know, went, hooray, we're back home, and everyone went, yay, it's the it's the, the person who's going to be the king, wonderful. I thought that was going to be it, and it was going to be the end, but no, it appears to be sort of an entire new bit of the game, where now, with the king, we've got different things to do. We've got to then look after the kingdom, we've got our own health and the kind of kingdom stability, sort of crown things to look after, so that's quite intriguing. I thought this was going to be a little sort of uh, tiny two-parter, but no, now it's going into a three-parter. It's becoming its own little sort of, its own mini-series in its own right, which is very exciting. So yeah, we'll finish up for now, and then we'll come back next time and just see what we can do. I think what we'll do is we'll go and look at the Statue of Einhard first, because I think the flags with the sort of yellow bits under them, they're important. They're kind of moving the story on, whereas these ones with the brown sort of uh, flag post flagpole thing they're not essential but they might give us a nice little bonus they might yeah we might find an item or get a new skill or get a new thing so we'll go and have a look at that one first then head to the barracks and then we'll see what we do with our potential conflict with the south but uh yeah very interesting i didn't realize there was kind of a second phase to this game so i'm looking forward to diving back in and seeing how we get on but we'll do all that kind of stuff next time hopefully you are still enjoying this if you are please do leave a like that would be most marvelous indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in choice of life middle ages 2 but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i will see you next time the city of cupboard it can be full of geeks very loyal geeks to me it's this sort of stripy hill that's interesting oh stripy mountain sorry i, I downgraded you to a hill just really irritate the norwegians everyone had gold people were lying on beds of gold they were eating gold they were trying to wash their hair with gold there was gold literally everywhere in our empire <laughs>